in the next five minutes, you're going to understand the complete risk to reward situation with everyone's favorite company, Apple. What's going on investors? Welcome to Everything Investing. I hope you're having a great day today. It's time to talk about Apple Inc, ticker symbol AAPL. The company just reported their Q3 earnings and we'll talk about them just a minute. We'll go over the numbers, the top line, the bottom line. We'll go over the record quarter that they just posted. And finally, we'll conclude with an evaluation of this business using our intrinsic value calculator to see whether or not this is something we as retail investors should add to our portfolios or not. And if you enjoy the analysis and the value investing perspective, please like and consider subscribing for more of this content. And as always, we'll be doing this analysis, like I said, in five minutes. So let's jump into it. All right. So first things first, coming straight from their press release here, iPhone and service drives June quarter record revenue. And they've actually reached an all time high for all project categories when it comes to their active install base. All right, so they reported revenues of about 83 billion, which is actually in line with analyst expectations here. And most of it comes from, again, product categories. And then they do, they are building on their services department as well. All right, total cost of sales here, 47 billion, which leaves us with gross margin of $36 billion. Deduct for our other SGNA research and development. And we're left with operating income of $23 billion here. When we deduct for taxes and unrealized gain and loss, we are at $19.4 billion in net income for this quarter. That is actually just slightly down year over year. But when we look at this from a nine months perspective, we're actually slightly higher, about 5 billion higher than we were last year. Okay, and that leads us to our earnings per share figure that came in at $1.20. This actually beat analyst expectations as they thought they would come in with $1.15. So that is good, but does it matter if we're beating or missing analyst guidances? No, it doesn't matter at all. We are looking for value in the business over a longer term horizon horizon. Now onto their net sales by segment. We look at this from a regional point of view. We can see in the Americas, we actually saw some growth here. saw some growth in Europe as well. We had a, it's pretty much flat year over year in China. We did have some lockdowns over that. A lot of COVID outbreaks over there, especially and Japan as well. They did actually tick down just slightly. And then the rest of Asia Pacific, this also increased. So that leads us to our $83 billion in net sales. Now, if we break this down by category, we can see iPhone sales, of course, have grown again year over year. A Mac sales actually decreased iPad sales are relatively flat. And then we have wearables and accessories that also just slightly ticked down. Again, this is coming from a quarter a year ago where we had stimulus pumped into the markets. Everyone was at home. They had some spare cash. They weren't paying for gas, things like that. So that's why we can see and expect a slight decline here. And then we had services, which you don't want to see de declining and they actually aren't. They have actually increased again. And is the reason why we had a slight uptick year over year. All right, now onto the balance sheet here. They have about $27.5 billion in cash plus about 20, let's say 21 billion dollars in marketable security so we're at about let's say 40 almost 50 billion dollars in cash for apple so that's sizable chunk of cash just sitting there and we compare that to the debt figures here we have about 14 billion dollars in current debt and then they have 94 billion dollars in long-term debt here so altogether, let's just call it about 110 billion dollars in long-term debt. Now, is this a concern for a business like Apple? Absolutely not. They were taking on a lot of their debt when the rates were very low. So this is cheap money to them. This is free money to them, plus the $50 billion that they have there, plus the cash flows that they produce on a year over year basis, which we'll get into in just a second. Yeah, the debt is definitely serviceable. And then when we compare our $336 billion in assets to the total liabilities, yeah, we can see why without this adjustment here, our shareholders equity has continued to increase year over year over year. Now let's jump into the statement of cash flows here to see what Apple produced on a nine months perspective, starting with our $80 billion, let's call it in net income, add back in depreciation, amortization, stock based compensation, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. We're at 98, let's call it $100 billion in operating free cash flow, deduct this $7.5 billion in capex figure here and we're left with about 90 billion dollars to reward shareholders so how exactly is apple rewarding shareholders well they pay down some taxes they pay the dividend and then the rest is the focused on repurchasing shares of stock and as you can see they're also paying down a little bit of debt the other thing they wanted to make sure that you're aware of is that they do have the, again that 35 billion dollars of cash sitting there on the sidelines to help with all of these numbers here so let's jump into our calculator here to see at what price we'd actually be comfortable with picking up shares of of Apple. So they had about $1.20 in earnings per share for this quarter alone. If we extrapolate that out, we can assume on a conservative basis, they can actually get to about $6 in earnings by the end of this year. We require a 10% return. They do pay a dividend. As we can see down here, our revenues have been growing at around 11% for the past five years. And our earnings per share has been growing about 22% annualized return. So if we put this into our calculator, a conservative estimate of about 15%, and then we say, you know, for the five to 10 years after that first 
average five year period, they only grow out of let's say 8% on a 20 PE, the stock would be valued at $209. Right now we're sitting at 157. And actually after hours, the stock is up 3%, as you can see here to $162. So we would see some capital appreciation here. Now let's assume that their growth rates stick to this 22% year over year for the first five years. And then they drop down to 15% for the five to 10 years after that on a 25 PE, the stock would be worth $400 per share. Now this is where Apple's investment thesis gets very interesting because if they can achieve that kind of growth, we'll see higher levels of cash flow. We'll see high levels of profits and that's going to translate well into the shareholders pockets. Now in the worst case scenario, let's say Apple actually slows on their growth down to let's say 10% for the first five years here, and then down to let's say only 5% for the five years after that on 15 PE, the stock would be worth about $131. And that is our margin of safety number here where we think, okay, Apple gets down here, I'm very comfortable picking up the shares. But let's assume it can get even worse for Apple. They only grow at 5% for the first five years and then they don't grow after that. They become a much more mature business. Then in the very worst case scenario, we're sitting at around $93 per share. Something else you have to take into consideration is that currently, if you were to pick up shares of Apple, they're sitting at a PE of about 25, a price to sales ratio of about six, which is not bad, and a price to book value of about 38. And finally, a price to free cash flow metric of about 28 times free cash flow. So that's a little bit rich. But if we look at this from the maximum time frame allowed, as you can see, this has been an absolute compounder year over year over year, just consistently growing no matter what. And this is exactly what you want to see from an investment. And this is why I called it everyone's favorite business because it is an amazing business at the end of the day. So that's the analysis for Apple stock. Can they continue to grow? They've been able to grow even through economic hardship. Can they continue that or will it slow? That's the analysis. That's the risk and reward. It will continue higher if it can continue to grow and it will continue to trend lower if growth starts to slow. That's the analysis. Please do your own due diligence and research on your investments. That's my analysis for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one.